I've actually have had people come to me with their um, camera spray by WD-40. Please, I beg you, don't do it. And if you have done it, please don't call me because I am not taking them anymore. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Sydney. Unfortunately, it's a little overcast today, but that is not a problem because I have something special planned for today. You probably know that I have two M6 cameras, um, this one here, the black one and the silver one. Um, the silver one I use most of the time and there's a reason for it. Because this one I got, I think, three years ago and ever since uh, it hasn't seen any service, uh, unlike my silver one. So on this one, I'm not 100% sure if the shutter speeds are perfectly you know, aligned and if they are correct. So that's something I wanted to have checked for a while, but for some reason I never got the chance to do so. But today this will change because we will go to a place, um, we will meet Jess from Viva La Film and she's, a ve she's super good at repairing cameras, she runs her own business. And on top of that, she's a, a big camera nerd, it seems like it. <laughs> No offense, but she has a ton of cool film cameras and all the, these things. So we're about to go to her place now, get this camera checked out and see if the, check, uh, the, the shutter speeds are accurate. And then we will also check out some cool camera gear. So looking forward to do that. All right, guys, see you later when I arrive at her place. All right, guys, I'm now here with Jess. Maybe introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jess and I run Viva La Film. Viva La Film, what is Viva La Film? Oh, so Viva La Film is uh, a little camera repair store in Sydney, Australia. We are into repairing analog cameras, uh, anything from point and shoots all the way to Hasselblad, Leicas, SLRs. Um, I am myself self-taught uh, with a few mentors. Um, but otherwise, we run like a little, like a little, you know, workspace. Um, you should see the equipment. So, it's pretty, <laughs> I would say it's pretty sophisticated. It looks like it. We try. We try our hardest to, like, you know, to learn more. We're always learning. Um, and I love, I love what I do for a living. So. She already showed me some uh, of the cameras she has. Maybe, maybe uh, let's show the people your favorite. Let's pick three cameras. Three cameras. Which oh, ones? My favorite three cameras. Well, this definitely, this definitely going to be my my M6 is going to be is going to be up there. Yeah. Um, then uh, my FM2. Uh, I don't have a lens on it right now, but this um, is my dad's camera, so uh, he it's bought really it brand important. new. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. nice. Um, and it's always been in, in my family, and that's the camera I learned mm -hmm. on. So, and this is the the third camera. Um, the Rolleiflex. I, I like all of them, but this is, uh, you know, it's nice because it's 2.8. Which one is it? 2.8? Uh, 2.8, but it's the center, not the planner. So mm. it's the che cheaper, cheaper 2.8 version. Cheaper version. Cheaper version, yeah. But even the, even the 3.5s, okay. you know, once, because you're not really shooting this at mm -hmm. like 2.8 or you always, at least I am shooting it at like, you know, 5.6 or F8. So they're all sharp, but you know. So I would shoot this wide open all the time. <laughs> I bet you would. Um, yeah, and those are like probably my favorite three cameras. I have lots of other cameras. She also has a Hasselblad X Pen and a 50, yeah. uh, 500 cm. 500 and, uh, cm, and I have like the Superb. That's a that's a really good camera, but it's not like. But it's a beautifully made camera by Voilander. Uh, it's very collectible. Uh, and the reason that this camera uh, is beautiful is that Can it has see? correction for uh, parallax, mm, okay. like mechanical correction for parallax. So what you see is really what you're going to get even when you're quite close. Wow, do you know uh, how, old, how old it is? Oh, it's probably about 60, 70 years old. I think it's probably made in the 30s because mm -hmm. it's very Art Deco. Yeah. Um, and I think they were Excellent. handmade. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and also very super collectible. They're more of a collectible oh, item. They the old school old school here? Voilanda on it. But yeah, they're they're a beautiful camera mm -hmm. to to shoot. They're just you know a lot of mechanical things mm -hmm. happening in there. Yeah. Nice. For for camera nerds like me, something nice. It's something just incredible nice. to have a camera that is this old and it still works. So. 
I'm pretty sure modern cameras, all the Sony's, they will not work in 80 years from now. And <laughs> definitely, no. you, there won't be a platform where you can actually yeah. download. It's mostly not so much that the cameras will work, it's that I think the technology mm -hmm. will be so far ahead mm -hmm. and the n name filing or the connection mm -hmm. to the computer will be so obscurely different that yes. so you won't be able to use them. Why don't you show us some of the, the techie stuff that oh, I was talking about? the techie stuff, all right. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we can start by showing you a little bit of my desk uh, and the setup that I have here. This is where I work every day and uh, we do have a specific uh, screwdrivers and keys, um, solutions and... So this, this uh, workspace here, right? Yeah, so you got yeah. it from somebody. Yeah, it is. I got it from, from one of my mentors. So um, he got this specifically made for okay. camera repairing and everything in this space um, had a thought out uh, process of where to go. So, and um, specifically this draw that is made like a, like a jeweler's draw, uh, where you keep some of your more important tools um, and you also keep this part of the draw clean. Um, yeah, and you also keep this part of the draw clean so you can work yeah. on things and then if anything falls down, yeah, it, it falls catches it. Yeah, it catches it inside. Um, we do use a special Japanese um, cross screwdrivers, um, not like a regular Phillips screwdriver, mm -hmm. um, just because that's what cameras were made out of. Like, that's why a lot of people end up like breaking their cameras, is they use a Phillips screwdriver on a screw um, JIS. So, yeah. So, um, she's pr probably talking about me, that's because what I would do. So. <laughs> we use a Phillips, a Phillips <laughs> screwdriver. Um, we have power supply and soldering stations. Um, we do have all the equipment that we need. I do yeah. have different sorts of tools um, that we use uh, for different camera models um, and um, for different lens models. We have lots of tools as well that are handmade specifically for do different things. Um, like um, I think I showed this in one of Hashem's videos. Um, it's a screwdriver that is made out of uh, a Hasselblad 500 cm part. Uh, it's an angle screwdriver that makes um, fixing Olympus OM1s to OM20P really, really easy. Instead of disassembling the whole camera, you can just get into the mirror cage and, you know, get into the adjustments without having to disassemble the whole camera. Um, we do have um, lens, uh, lens tools and uh, this this draw is for parts making tools. So we do make a lot of the parts because a lot of the uh, cameras um, parts don't exist anymore. And sometimes you just have to make with what you do. Uh, and this is for making parts. Um, we also have filing and cleaning um, and um, some other tools for yeah. lens for lens extraction. Uh, we do have uh, oils and different kinds of greases for different things and also like desoldering and uh, little bits and bobs and pieces over here. Um, what else do we have? Like I said, we have power supplies. Uh, these two here are infinity and collimation and uh, so ca this calibration. One here? Yeah, this one here, uh, I mean, I will have to plug it in for you to actually see. This was made by one of my mentors. That's fine, you didn't need to, that's fine. Uh, you look down on the lens and there's a target that sits at infinity inside. Yeah. Um, and that's for, for checking infinity focus on a lot mm, of the cameras. Okay. Uh, oh, but this, this one, one maybe, here, I can, maybe I can film the it. The Leica here. one, yeah. I don't know if you can get that far because your lens is quite wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is a target at the very Just center at the end continue. of this mm -hmm. and it has, you know, quite meticulous lines to make sure you get exact calibration. Uh, this is a Leica tool. Um, it was specifically uh, made by Minolta uh, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. like a, for calibrating. I mean, the, the front element looks, looks Yeah, really I mean, cool. 100, 100 centimeter F8. Uh, we can probably, like if you, like if we invert it the other way, it will probably be like a thousand mm -hmm. millimeter lens or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this here is a shutter tester. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we use it to test for exposure times, aperture accuracy, run times, curtain times. 
Um, it's, it's probably like our bread and butter when it comes to testing the cameras. Um, we, we do need it. You do need to have one of those to be mm -hmm. able to have accuracy. And we will test this yeah, very we will, shortly. We will use, yeah, and we will use your Leica and we'll test how your shutter speeds are going on that. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Um, we also have like a special collimator tools uh, for Leica and a special optic tools for Leica over here. Um, I have... Um, electronic leak checkers um, for any camera. I mean, mm -hmm. this was made by Minolta, but you can use it with any camera. Battery testers, uh, oscillator uh, to check for signals uh, inside uh, the different uh, components of cameras that have electronics. Uh, and this is also like to check um, the mm -hmm, leak, mm -hmm. but th that was that's handmade and this is the actual thing. A lot of the technicians back in the time used to make their own tools. Um, because tools like these ones were very, very expensive, so they will come up with like ideas on yeah. how to make their own, their own ones. So how did you find these things? Uh, well, I'll, it took me three years to find Ben. Ben is the my mentor that I got most of the equipment from, like the desk and and the and the test stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the like stuff I got from a different person, but. Uh, it took me three years. Ben was selling his business, oh, maybe more than three years, because I had okay. it for five years ago. So he retired? He retired okay. and he was selling his business and he put it online. And back then I was just a camera collector fixing her own cameras. That, mm -hmm. that was me. I, 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 maybe I fixed a couple of stuff for my friends. Um, this is how it often starts, you know? Yeah. Some photo, yeah. oh, I shot the wedding for, for some friends and suddenly I'm a wedding photographer. Wedding for, it was kind of like that. Yeah, I yeah. kind of like fixed a couple of cameras for my friends and then all of a sudden I had everybody knocking on my door, can you fix my camera? Um, and I wanted to buy Ben's business, but at that point I was broke, I was a student, I, uh, I just didn't have the, the money. Yeah. And when I started getting into it and I started fixing more cameras and I was like, I really love this, I want to do this for a living. I went looking for him and he had disappeared from the internet uh, no. uh, and all there was left is was an article that he used to like to play long ball and then the, you know he was somewhere out mm -hmm. in the country uh yeah and it took me three years of like just asking pretty much anybody i knew and you found him and i found him that's how you yeah found him? i found him it took me three years just to like you know to figure out if anybody knew how to get a hold of this guy i became a bit obsessed about yeah. you know film cameras because i was like how come yeah. i'm not good i bought one camera then i bought two then i bought ten and you bought the then, first one that did not work and then you yeah and then you buy you buy one that doesn't work yeah. and then you end up trying to fix it yeah. and then all of a sudden you're down a rabbit hole learning how to fix yeah. cameras and I'm here today, nice. like actually fixing cameras for the people, which is and it today, makes me really happy. And today we will check out if my yeah, M6, like a M6. Let's if let's this, have uh, a look at this little puppy. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna have to take your lens off because the camera, uh, the tester only works with a 50 millimeter lens. So we ah, okay. Put your lens over here. But I should 28. Do, so yeah, you do. But for for testing, we need you? a 50. You can trust me. It doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter what lens. But for the tester to work accurately, you need a 50 millimeter lens. And I have a 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, in case into this metal. But it's blocking thing. the viewfinder. Um, so for your light metering? Oh, right no, now we're no, when I go out and shoot, I know when I put uh, this on. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want to put that one on the camera <laughs> to shoot. But for the testing, okay. I'm going to go in here. So actually you don't mount it to the camera, you just... Well, I can if I had a 50 millimeter uh, like a lens okay. on here, but I think all I have is a 40. Yeah, so okay. it will be a little bit inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Um, also, because I do uh, like to be organized, as you yeah. can see, and I like to be working efficiently. Yeah. Um, when I get somebody's camera, if I don't need to co uh, calibrate the lens, so if they're not paying for the lens, I don't want to have it. So this came with the, when you bought this? When I bought this, yeah. Okay. So uh, Ben, my mentor, he mm -hmm. had this specially made because it oh, made wow. that th this is not part of this. Mm -hmm. He got a 50 millimeter lens, he took it all out and he encased <laughs> it into this metal contraption. So That's then he could, ass. because it makes it uh, more efficient. Yeah. I don't have to be putting the lens yeah. on. If you're only working on the camera, you just put this here and then you can continue to work on all the different models okay. that you want. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so that goes here. But there, there's film in the camera. I hope that's not a problem. Oh, no, that is a problem. So we're no, going to have kidding. to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely a problem. Okay, so we have to take okay. your plate. Yep. Open up the back. And we're also going to take the lid off because. So it's like the first 
surgery that my that your camera has. Oh wow! Yeah. It's never probably never been uh, open. That was really tough to pull. It was crunchy. I, I, I mean, I bought the camera. Um, three years ago and I think uh, the original owner he bought it brand new so I think it n has never seen any service yeah and it looked like when I got it, it looked like brand new brand I mean, new it's like, and well, a lot of like a buyers like the old like a buyers yeah. are more collectors than anything I'm just I'm just obsessed with like going at it as, as as I open a camera I kind of get rid of all the stuff that I know that I won't need later on yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see that even from the time there's a bit of gunk here on the I this, think the last time I used it was in Mexico or last year. Yeah, so it would have been it would have been Mexican dusty in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, that's dust everywhere there. Okay, so we got the camera, we got the bag open, and then I have a, a special testers here that connect to to the light at the front, uh, and we have to make sure that this is sitting properly on the inside. Offset, exposure time. Average of five. So it's so one thousand, right? Yeah. So we start at one thousand. I can shoot any. So right now it's going to tell us what your one thousand looks like. Mm -hmm. So the camera knows that it has to shoot at one thousand. Okay, before you do it, before you do it, I want to give a. Uh, I want to give a, maybe uh, what I think. My opinion. I think one thousand will be maybe more or less one five hundred. One five hundred. Okay. Can I say something to you? Yeah. That's actually pretty accurate. Like actually, like a camera, a lot of them don't hit the one thousand mark. The, that Cheating. 1000 there is is a little bit for looks, <laughs> in my opinion, because every camera, well, every camera is a little bit different. Some yeah. of them can hit it, but the 1000 is probably a, the most unstable speed on the on the Leicas. Have you ever seen one that actually reached 1000? No, no, I have seen some, and I have okay. seen some. I mean, you could tighten the the curtains as well to yeah. to not to be a bit more than a thousand, but it just becomes more, un more unstable, uh, and I mm -hmm, think it's mm -hmm. because of the way the drum shutter works. Okay. Um, it's so actually quite an old-fashioned design in comparison yeah. to like you know having a Nikon FM2. The couple shutters are just way more accurate. Yeah. 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 Alrighty, but, so but I guess this is easier to fix, you know, and cheap, much cheaper. That's why maybe uh, maybe not cheaper to fix because okay. like there's not that many people that okay. can fix them. Mm -hmm. um, but sourcing the materials might be easier. Oh yeah, you know? e or easy. Wait, because it's simpler. Yeah. You can do like if you're having a curtain problem yeah. or an oiling problem or just a calibration problem. The easier things to do if you're like a tech, mm -hmm. way easier than working on a mm -hmm. because like for example a Nikon FM to get to the shutter, you're gonna have to dismantle everything, top, mm -hmm. bottom. And take mirror box out. Well, with, with this, you only have to take the bottom plate mm -hmm. out and do some oiling and then mm -hmm. also calibrating. Yeah. Okay. Now the moment of truth. The moment of so truth. So it, it would show us here. It would show us here, but just know that this these are going to move a little bit. Uh, that's what we do a five average or even a ten average. Okay. So we're averaging your exposure. Okay. The, this this um these shutters are not precision shutters. Mm -hmm. They're slightly different every time mm -hmm. you shoot it. Every time you wind it, it winds slightly different. So it could be, you know, and also depending on what oil you have on the camera, mm -hmm. when it was last lubricated and service, I have no it idea. can also also like fluctuate quite mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. within the opening or the closing curtain. So anyway, okay, so we're going to go, I'm going truth. Here we go. Oh, you have, uh, yeah, there's a bit of an error there, but it's not bad. What does it mean? Uh, okay, so um, this supposed to be closer to the 1.00 millisecond, okay. but you're closer to 1.5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're closer to the five, closer to the 500, but maybe it's like a 700th of a second. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. But you want to, to for beyond the specs yeah. for your camera, you want it to be somewhere between. 0 0.77 and 1.33. Okay. So what are we going to do now is we're going to do a 10 average. Um, and we're going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Can you see how like is yeah. your closing curtain yeah. is definitely like much, much different. Yeah. And it gave me one error. So, and there was quite a bit of fluctua fluctuation. So I don't think that your problem it's actually like calibration related as I think you have dry lubrication. Okay. Um, but otherwise it's close, close enough. Very nice. Yeah, close enough. But if you were to like paint really big, yeah, yeah. you might kind of see that you, on your runtime, there is a little bit of a gradient. I mean, it's okay. a, it's a yeah. 
20% of an exposure okay. over here in yeah. comparison to over there. Oh, it's a little bit of vignetting. I don't mind Yeah, that, a little yeah. bit of vignetting on one side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now it's 500th of a second. Okay. And it's spot on. So your 500th wow. of a second is it's actually... Like, it should be like two. It should be two. Yeah. But it's really, let's do five average. And can you see how I'm getting some errors? Yeah. That's your lubricant. So it's, it's okay. uh, sometimes some of the reading is mm -hmm. because I'm shooting, like I said, these cameras, when they wind, every time it can be a little bit different. So some of those windings, you're getting quite a bit of a discrepancy, but for most of the time, you're pretty okay. close. Gonna go to 125th and that should be half of that. Can I say I'm impressed? I mean, I wasn't expecting that. And then 125 and it should be double that. And by then you can see that there's a bit more discrepancy yeah, yeah. with the opening curtain. And I will tell you right now that this is not a calibration issue, it's an oiling issue. Okay. Oh, in, in, my, in my opinion. Okay. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's going to be better. And as we get to the slower shutter speeds, it should equalize a bit better by your opening curtain. So a little bit of olive, that, but olive that oil is, was offered? No, <laughs> no olive oil and no <laughs> WD-40 ever. You, you said that some people actually do it, right? So they, oh, I, so actually, they ruin the camera. I've actually have had people come to me with their um, camera spray by WD-40. <laughs> please, I beg you. <laughs> Don't do it. And if you have done it, please don't call me because I am not taking them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is definitely a discrepancy here with your opening curtain as we get to the slowest mm -hmm. speed. But let's go to the one second and see if your um, the slower speed uh, mechanism on the inside okay. is working correctly. Mm, pretty good. Is it? Yeah. It's supposed to be uh, 1,000. Yeah. So you're closer. I will say this is also has to do with the um, the mechanism on the inside. I'll see if I can find one so I can show you how it looks. I just got to put this stuff away and we also always yeah. move this stuff out of the way because it's, your camera is quite expensive and we don't want to pull it. Let me see. Actually, it was really cheap. It was, oh, so I can't drop it? No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no it was no, really okay. expensive. It was very expensive. That's what I thought. Let me see if I have a timing here to show you. Uh, I think maybe I used the last one I had. I have some, some curtains here, some old. But the timing, the way it works, it's kind of like a compu timing, like, a, like the timing that you get inside, like, a, um, let's say, a Rolleiflex. Yeah. There is a little timing leg on the inside that does your slow shutter speeds. And being a little bit slow like this, it says to me that maybe there is some dirt in there. Okay. Um, and it just needs a bit of cleaning on lighter fluid. But, yeah. Your your speeds for for a Leica that hasn't been serviced. I don't. I'm not sure. It, it's possible, you know, because I think the camera served. hasn't seen any film in many many years. Many years, yeah. And like I said, that also that also affects yeah. it. The fact that it could have been sitting there for years with yeah. the oils dried up. Okay. Then you come and use it, and what you're doing is that you're moving yeah. those oils around. Mm -hmm. They are not smooth anymore. Okay. And that's where we're getting a little bit of you know discrepancy. And yeah, what I recommend for your camera is a, a good CLA. Yeah. 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 I mean, we can also check your light meter. Ah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. But there's no battery. I don't know if you need it. There's no battery uh, No in here. battery. Yeah, no. you're definitely going to need batteries. And I think yeah, I have I never some put one testing in there. battery. It's actually a Because I had thing. one. Actually, I had one in my silver one. Yeah. There was a battery in there, but the, get, the battery got bloated. Okay, so that's... So a, then I almost could not take the, the cap off. So that was a bit of a problem. Yeah, um, so that that's happened. So that means that your camera definitely needs a CLA. Uh, that means that there's some current uh, being drawn, I believe, by the by the behind this battery. Yeah. There is the actual main computer or the main board that lives uh, that lives here. Yeah. And sometimes corrosion from one so, battery can yeah. leave more corrosion in there. And it so makes it's a on this one, it's fine. But on uh, it was on the silver one. On the one. silver one, yeah. And also the battery. If I put it in there, the battery is like empty in in a few days. Yeah. So that if means I don't you to put it on uh, on bulb mode, it will die. Yeah. So see this here. See this little machine yeah. we have here. So leak checker. So yeah. what you have is a leak. Yeah. So there is some corrosion making contact somewhere yeah. and passing it through your board. Yeah. Uh, and wasting and also it is what makes the battery yeah. uh, grow and explode. Um, and yeah, it can be it can be usually remedied by okay. like having the camera CLA okay. and having that board cleaned up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. I'll take this the one second off. moment of truth. Second moment of truth, and see if your line meter is working correctly. Uh, I need to put here. some dramatic music under this now. Put it like. Oh, I need a fifty millimeter lens as well. 
because uh, yeah. So with the with the with the Leica, yeah, uh, the light meter, the way it works, um, it reads from that red patch over there. I mean, from the white patch inside. There's a sensor up here, yeah, uh, that leads uh, reads the light reflected from that yeah, yeah. and calculates it with your shutter speeds. Okay. And what we want to Ooh. do is we want to put it at a hundred. We want to put it at f8. And 15th supposed to be somewhere around the 250th. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Let me see. So just so I understand, yes. what you do is you set so you set the settings in here so it gives you some light values. Yeah, so and it's giving me the right light value for So it's telling you like the F, aperture or ah yeah, it's here. For it's here. F uh, F five point six. If I go here and together is F8, because it's the, this one and that one together is F8. Mm -hmm. If I go here, it's F11. Mm -hmm. If I go the next one, it's F16. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, we're doing F, F8 on okay. the lens. And then you can see in the viewfinder if it's ISO, uh, yeah. what's giving you. Okay. Yeah, it was giving me. And then ISO 100, mm -hmm. and you can change the ISO as well if your camera is like. Um, and then the Kelvins, each camera work with a different like if slide meter uh, works with a okay. different but yeah. for the most of it most most of them fall in the 1.3 14.0 okay. three gallons um and i look at what the your light meter tells me and it's a little bit yeah it's a, a tad bit uh overexposing okay. just a little bit like maybe by one stop yeah yeah overexposing but you know you overexposure is always good yeah yeah uh, and you, what you don't want is underexposure yes. but yeah your meter is actually also working uh, what a so, relief. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, otherwise you do have a functional camera, uh, but we'll be happy to oil your camera for you okay, if cool. that's, uh, if yeah, that's the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some olive oil and uh, then... Yeah, yeah. We, will, we will put in some, you know, some salad dressing yeah. <laughs> with, with the olive oil in there. Nice. Just for you. Your camera is in top shape. <laughs> oh, okay, guys, there you have it. Uh, I'm really impressed. Um, not just by your work, also by my camera, of course. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it's because it's a Leica. Yeah. <laughs> so because I had no idea how this kind of stuff works. And uh, actually, uh, it totally made sense. I mean, I think because you are self-taught, for you, it's probably easier to explain to other people because you had to explain to yourself first. I did, yeah. It's yeah. not that you do this since... 40 years and it's like second nature, you know, it's like super easy, so. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a while, but I'm yeah. learning every single day. So we still, I, I know I still have a long way to go, but uh, I love it. And like I said, it's what I like to do for a living. And uh, I just putting all my eggs so into it. So if you are in Australia and you need your Leica fix or whatever. Yeah, or any other, any other film cameras, yeah, hit us up. At the moment, we're close because um, we are actually um, rich or intake numbers. Uh, but we will hopefully reopen again uh, by the end of the year or beginning of next year. That means uh, 23. Yeah, yeah, 2023. <laughs> if, if you watch this in five if, years. In yeah. five years time, um, I don't know. Hopefully we have a shop and I have an apprentice and somebody else is learning from me um, how to keep all these cameras alive. I'm pretty sure this will happen. Uh, I mean, she's so dedicated to do this. Yeah, you know, It will happen, yeah. 100%. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. I will put all the details in the video description and yeah as always if you like the video give a thumbs up so yes. also subscribe, yes. to, subscribe to her social media i will yeah, put the links in there i do have i do have like an instagram account that i'm pretty uh, proud of and a channel that i haven't uploaded anything in a couple of years <laughs> oh yeah. we'll just cut this out of the video yeah so. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah all right guys then see uh, see you in the next one until then auf wiedersehen Boop.